Hey, what's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Madman24, and today I'm going to be building, unboxing, and then battling my own Fingertech Viper Antweight Combat Robotics Kit. So, I gotta thank the fantastic people at Fingertech for sending me this. They saw that I am a big fan of their stuff. I have a video of them fighting at Robot Ruckus on my channel. You can check that out. Go look up Sadbot 2019 versus Crash and Burn. That is them fighting. But right now, we have the Finger Tech Viper Kit. And this is a one pound battle ready kit that you assemble yourself. Once it's built, it's ready to go. So, let's build it. So this is my robot currently. I've been building it for about a solid 10 to 15 minutes and I've already got the motors connected, I have the speed controller set up, and I have the wires going to the grids, I think. I don't remember the name of that. I'm still a beginner, okay? This is this is me. Anyway, this is just the body. I'm keeping the body near me when I'm ready, but as of now, I'm not needing anything right now. All the tools that are needed come assembled with the package. Well, not fully assembled, they just come in parts. Like this, they give you your own hex keys with the screws you need. You don't have to go out of your way to get tires. They give you the hubs. They give you a key to help you put the hubs on the, the wheels. They Also, if you buy the receiver with the transmitter online as a separate fee, you can buy one receiver and one transmitter and basically not have to worry about buying another transmitter for every single robot because many people have said that they've used many finger tech controllers for bigger robots and more than one robot in fact. If you are having trouble when you're building your robot I highly recommend checking the instructions that come with the kit. They're very detailed, they give good explanations about everything regarding battery safety, ways to plug things in, warning signs, and even an assembly line for everything. So, once again, if you're building this, I highly recommend using the instructions, or go with the alternative option and go to Witch Doctor's YouTube channel, yes, that Witch Doctor that is on BattleBots, and follow the Witch Doctor Junior series and follow their tutorial. They show everything, they go into more detail than I think is in the instructions, which is equally as good. And better yet, it's set by an actual BattleBots team, who, and they know what they're doing. If they can make a 250-pound combat robot, they can tell you how to make a one-pound version. So that is great. That's great. Real simple. Thank you again, FingerTech. Building this robot was honestly one of the coolest things I've ever done. And I've done a lot of things in my life, but this is definitely one of the coolest things. And with a competition coming up, it was even more cool knowing that I was actually going to be a real robot fighter. Even though I did run into a few snags of my own doing while building the robot, FingerTech was instantly able to help me no matter what the problem was. Thanks again, FingerTech. You guys are the greatest. And here it is. Ladies and gentlemen, say hello to Crazed Madman, the newest member and only member of Team Madman. And this is my first test of Crazed Madman, my new robot. So, robot is on, transmitter's on, here we go. Now you're probably asking yourself why my robot has all that metal armor instead of the clear plastic polycarbonate that came with the kit. 
Well, I decided to go into my first competition heavily armored so that no matter what comes against me, I can take it. So I decided to send the measurement files to Send Cut Send, and they sent me back some aluminum armor for my robot. Thanks, Send Cut Send! With Robot Ruckus inching closer day by day, I decided to practice my driving and get better so that I can outrun and outdrive my opponents. Without a weapon, it's pretty much the only thing I can do. With my robot built and all my tools packed up, I headed up to Kissimmee, Florida to give kids the world village. In all honesty, I had no idea what this place was, but my family knew what it was because my sister stayed here on her Make-A-Wish trip when she was a kid. Let's see what went down. I'm back, and we're here at Give Kids the World, and this is where Robot Ruckus is taking place today. So, let's go inside and see what's there. It's a lot. I'm very scared, first competition. But, there's a lot of cool stuff here. I mean, here you got Extinguisher's Wedge and Hammer from the Gigabyte fights, and here you got the full-size Witch Doctor. That is ridiculously cool. Now, this is a very, very big place. I've never been to Give Kids the World. My sister was here a while ago when they were treating her cancer, and yes, she had cancer. She's fine now. She's been cleared for 18 years, but it's a, it's, it's ginormous. I'm, I'm almost hyperventilating. It's very, very big. A couple bots are going through inspection. We got a big arena, 6x6, six six, I think, with a pit. That's good. And a lot of competitors here. Tables among tables of bots, both big and small. Whew. It's a lot to take in. After saying hello to Lilith Speck, aka the captain of Team Sporkinok from the TV show BattleBots, I got right to work preparing my robot for the first fight. And to my surprise, I was the first fight of the day. I was going up against a guy who had multiple robots competing at this event. He had a couple in the beetle weight, a couple in the ant weight, and a couple in the fairy weight. To no one's surprise, I was terrified. Let's see how the first fight went. Blue square, are you ready? Blue square, are you ready? Alright, this fight begins. So yeah, I think we all know who the real winner of that fight was. Definitely not me. But I gave it my all. Here's my analysis of the fight. And I'm not being biased even though this went to a judge's decision. I know who the winner was and I saw. So right off the bat, we go face to face. His weapon collides with my wedge and his weapon is clanging against it, rattling like crazy. 
I shove him into the wall and I actually pin him for a little bit until I make the fatal mistake of driving in reverse and pinning myself against the wall, which then he finds the opportunity to hit me a couple of times. During one of his many exchanges, my robot's left wheel goes out and I'm down to one wheel drive. Now keep in mind, since my robot is two wheels, that means I'm basically shuffling across the floor with little to no motion. He's throwing me in the air, I'm trying to get away, but also stay squared up to him so that he doesn't get my wheels. Well, that worked for a little bit until he pins me face first against the wall and this is one of the weaknesses I knew was going to happen. If I was pinned up directly against the wall like this, I knew I was not going to be able to drive off, no matter how hard I fiddled the joystick. And I was not allowed to hit the arena to cause it to shake to fall over. That's illegal. But then he decides, since this is the first fight of the day, I might as well knock him back down. Around this time, there's 45 seconds left on the clock, so I continue to just ram into him until POW! The wheel comes off and I'm driving on one wheel like a madman. Huh, it kinda fits the name. According to the rules in ant weight divisions, tap outs are allowed, which means you can stop the fight prematurely if you don't want your robot to go the full two minutes and suffer damage. But I knew my robot could take hits, I was just worried about how many hits I could take before the robot just started breaking. And to my surprise, I take every hit, one after another, with just a lot of scratches and scars. I'm being thrown up against the wall with my robot directly in front of me, and I just start driving for my life. I want to make it the full two minutes just to show that I'm a durable brick that can somehow survive the competition. Since I didn't want to tap out in my very first fight ever, I decided let's take this the full two minutes, let's give the crowd a show. Then in the last few seconds my top comes off and screws are everywhere in the box. By this point the fight ends and it goes to the judges. No surprise, I lost. I shake hands with the captain and we go our separate ways back to our tables to assess our damage. Well, for him, he just had to recharge his batteries and go on. For me, I was picking scraps up out of the arena. While assessing the damage, I check over everything in my robot. I check to make sure my battery isn't damaged, my speed controllers, my receiver, my motors, and everything else. The big problem with the robot was that during one of the exchanges, he didn't just cut my wheel off, he cut the drive shaft off. So at this point, I have a useless motor sitting on my table, but thankfully I packed a couple of spares in case something like this did happen. Not only did I pack spare motors, I packed spare wheels, spare speed controllers, spare nuts, spare bolts, and spare hex keys. I packed everything. Once again, all these parts and pieces were from Fingertech. Thank you again, Fingertech. You made rebuilding my robot possible. To my surprise, the very same person that destroyed me in the same fight also came over to help me rebuild my robot and give me some pointers on what to do in case something like this does happen again. This is why I love the community. It's full of people that just care about each other. And even if you destroy your opponent, they're still likely to help you. Shockingly, I was on the opposite side of this situation as well. I was helping really young kids rebuild their robots after older people just destroyed them in competition. I was giving them pointers and I even gave them tips on where to get metal armor. Once again, I got the metal armor from Send Cut Send. Thank you, Send Cut Send. Here's something you need to know. Since most ant weight competitions go in the double elimination format, you have to lose twice to be officially knocked out. Now that I lost my first fight, I was set up in the loser's bracket. So once all the original fights went down, I had to go against someone who also lost. There's a little bit of good news and bad news in this situation. The good news was that I was going up against another wedge. Exactly what I needed after getting pummeled in my first fight. The bad news is, the person I'm fighting is the son of the creator of Kraken from BattleBots. So, yeah. First I go up against someone with a spinner, then I go up against someone who's literally the descendant of a competitor from the TV show. I was very shocked to see him come over and help me get my robot ready for inspection and battle. See, this is why I love the community. People who you're probably going to fight later on are coming over to help you. So, yeah, that's amazing. The big problem was when the fight started, he immediately goes face to face with me. I get close to the pit with him, but he sidesteps me and I go face first into it. No more than five seconds. But then since Lilith sees that this was my last fight and that it was only five seconds long, we decide to have a grudge match, just for fun. I don't have footage of the first fight, so here's the second fight. Fight, robots, fight! from behind. Get from behind. Stop! There's a 
Go. Get in from behind. In the pit, man. Batman, get him in the pit. Get him, get him in the pit. Pit. Drive him in the pit. Go. There you go. Go and steady. Go and steady. And that'll win the race. Come back in my name. One minute remaining. There's a Yeah, he's crazy. No wonder there's a screw loose. He's crazy. There's a screw loose behind the transmitter. He's just got a really good way. Yeah. He was doing really well last time until he oh, got yeah. upside down. Yeah. I've never seen, I've never seen him get like that. Oh uh, no, what's happening? Why is my wheel coming off? Probably not. Of course. The legend of the one wheeled madman. Even though I knew I was out of the competition after this fight, I wanted to have fun. And this fight was just nothing but fun. I got to go around and I actually did get in a few good hits before I lost my wheel again. I'll get to that in a moment. So Supernova's wedge was a lot lower than mine, which meant he got under me a lot. But right here, he gets stuck on the arena floor, and I immediately think, hey, I can win a grudge match. But since I knew this fight wasn't going to count for anything, and he was going to win either way, I just thought, you know what, let's keep going, because the other guy did it to me, so let's do it to him. This fight wasn't going to do much, and the other fight lasted 5 seconds, so I start pushing him around, trying to get him off that little spot so we can keep going. And it takes a while. If you're wondering what those two sticks on the side of my robot are, those are rakes. Themed after the Hypershock rakes from Team Hypershock and BattleBots. You know, the fight where they whack the drone out of the sky. So, some guy was walking around just giving these out to people, and I was like, can I have two? I took two, stuck them onto my robot because I thought they looked cool. And they were kind of funny. We continue fighting, and this was honestly the fight that I wanted to have as a first fight. Just a simple wedge bot going against another simple wedge bot. Or basically two robots that can't cause damage, just fighting it out. I wanted this fight as my first fight, but I wasn't as lucky. But still, I had a lot of fun. We got some good hits on each other. He pushed me around, I pushed him around. Lots of simple fun. There's really not much else to say about this fight. We were just shoving around, pushing back and forth. This was just, it may have been more of a boring fight, but it was a fight I was fighting in. I was happy. But right here is where things turn for the worse. My wheel comes right off. Just like one, two, three, and boop. There it goes. So my wheel comes off, and the problem was it wasn't screwed on tight enough, nor was it screwed onto the flat side of the drive shaft. So that's why it came off. Big problem was, I didn't check before my fight because I was rushing, but no matter who you fight, you're gonna learn something either way. Now I know that before a fight, I gotta check my wheels. Now that my two fights were up, I had to wait till the end of the event to do grudge matches and rumbles. But in the meantime, I got to announce a couple of fights and even watch some close friends fight. One of the closest friends I had at the event was a kid named Skylar. We had just met beforehand and I saw him on the Witch Doctor Jr. series. He was ridiculously nice, so committed to his robot, and super energetic. We matched styles and we just had a lot of fun together. We even had a grudge match at the end of the event. I technically won, but it didn't count for anything. We did, however, have a rumble between five ant weight robots. Let's see that footage now. This fight was a battle royale. Last robot standing wins. Now this was a chaotic mess of who knows what. I gave it everything I had in this fight, and I had so much fun. Keeping track of every robot was so cool. The only robot that I didn't want to go face to face with was Low Jinx. Low Jinx had a horizontal spinner that was really low, and I knew if I got my tire caught near them, I was dead meat. 
So I go in and I just do my best to stay away from Lojinx. Thankfully, Lojinx loses control. They try to fire up their spinner, but they launch themselves into the pit. After Lojinx yeeted themselves out of the fight, the only problem I had was just going up against the other three remaining robots. The biggest robot that I feared was Florine, a robot with a lifter. They flipped me over and I thought I could drive upside down until I realized the rakes that I taped on were preventing me from going at all. I stayed alive for as long as I could. I moved all over the arena but just very slowly until Speedy Wedge saw my immobile body and just said, I'm gonna throw you in the pit with Lojinx. I ended up in the pit and Florine won the fight. My first rumble wasn't too bad, but it definitely could have gone better if only I hadn't taped on those rakes. So, giving my final thoughts on this robot and how I did at Robot Ruckus, I feel like I did a good job for a beginner. I mean, was I perfect? Absolutely not. Nobody's perfect. I may not have been perfect, but at least I learned some new things. I got a first-hand look at what it felt like and what it looked like to be a robot builder. Being the one who's building a robot, maintaining it, driving it, and everything else in between. I have a much bigger respect for teams all over the world. I saw firsthand what it was like being a part of the robot combat community. Making new friends, helping enemies, and even meeting some legends. I felt the same emotions most competitors feel when they go into their first fights. I could feel myself feeling the same emotions that real competitors felt. I felt the highs. I felt the lows. I felt it all. But no matter how you slice it, I felt accomplished. I felt like I had done something that I'd only dreamed of doing. But now, it's real. I had an amazing set of people from Fingertech helping me every step of the way. They helped me get the parts that I needed before the competition. They helped me with troubleshooting as I was building my robot. No matter what happened, they were there to help me. Thank you again, Fingertech. I can never thank you guys enough. You guys did so much for me. I think the real question now is do I plan to continue doing this? The answer is yes. I'm planning on building a three pound soon and I want to expand on my original one pound, maybe by adding a weapon. Do I know what the future has in store for my robot? No. I could get destroyed in my upcoming fights. I could possibly destroy another person. Or I could just break down and lose everything. But no matter what happens, I want to continue doing this. After going to my first competition and seeing what it's like firsthand, I don't want to stop. I'm excited for my next competition, and I can't wait to see what's going to go down. That's going to do it for this video. Leave a like if you liked the video, comment down below what you think of my robot and what possible changes I can make, and also hit the subscribe button. Make sure that you stay notified whenever I upload a new video by clicking that bell. This has been a fun video, and I hope you had fun tuning in, but now I gotta tune out. I've been Madman24, you've been you, thank you so much for watching.